The most expensive signing of the 2023-24 Premier League season so far has been Kai Havertz, signed by Arsenal for £65 million, followed by Dominic Sobers to Liverpool and Mason Mount to Manchester United. The odds of that still being the case by the end of the current transfer window are about as slim as Watford having fewer than three managers this season, and it wouldn't even surprise me if what I just said had already changed by the time that this video comes out. Havertz, Sobersly, and Mount being the league's three most expensive signings, I mean. I would be a bit surprised if Watford had already burnt through three different managers, but hey, I wouldn't put it past them. Valerian Ishmael might not have, sufficiently impressed in his debut training session. The Premier League is the biggest, richest, and oftentimes, the most idiotic league in world football. It is a land in which a team can pay £35 million for Danny Drinkwater, convince themselves that Mario Balotelli is a suitable replacement for prime Luis Suarez, and accidentally end up paying £20 million for players that they didn't ever actually want to sign. It's also the league of Cantona, Makalele, and Haaland though, and in today's video, I wanted to take a look back at the most expensive Premier League signing, and indeed, signings, every season since the league's inception or breakaway if you like, back in 1992, since I thought that it might be interesting to see how they got on, whether they were a success or a failure, and whether there might be any patterns or anything that we can learn from it. Without further ado then, who never played in the Premier League despite going on trial at Manchester United, here is the most expensive Premier League signing every single season. 1992-93, Teddy Sheringham. A man who manages to rank 12th in the Premier League's all-time scoring charts and 11th in terms of the league's all-time assists, despite having almost a decade of football under his belt when the Premier League was first created, Teddy Sheringham had remarkable ability and longevity. Sheringham scored Nottingham Forest's first goal of the Premier League year against Liverpool, but just a week later, he was sold to Tottenham for £2.8 million. It was a move that had catastrophic consequences for Forrest, who failed to replace him and were relegated that season. Meanwhile, Sheringham went on to win the inaugural Premier League Golden Boot with 21 goals. Following five seasons and 98 goals at White Hart Lane, Sheringham was sold to Manchester United as Eric Cantona's replacement in June of 1997 for a fee of £3.5 million. The next most expensive signings that season were Martin Keown, who joined Arsenal mid-season for £2 million, and Dean Saunders, who was signed by Aston Villa for a fee of £2.5 million. Quid. If you took Sheringham, Keown, and Saunders' combined transfer fees, it would still add up to less than Everton paid for Neil Mope, a centre-forward who is allergic to goals, and Chelsea paid for Joao Felix, and that was just to take him on loan for a few months. 1993-94, Roy Keane. The Premier League's first British record transfer fee, it would be fair to say that Roy Keane proved to be worth the then massive £3.75 million that Manchester United paid for him in the summer of 1993. Keane had just been relegated with Nottingham Forest, but he earned plaudits and made the PFA Team of the Year that season regardless. Keane had a verbal agreement in place with Kenny Dalgleish to join Blackburn Rovers when Alex Ferguson stole in, a decision which was arguably a decisive factor in Manchester United becoming the dominant force in the Premier League for the next decade, with Keane acting as their talismanic captain and one of the best central midfielders in the world. Brian Dean, who joined Leeds United, and Tim Flowers, signed by Blackburn Rovers, were that season's next most expensive arrivals. 1994-95, Andy Cole. Manchester United had the most expensive signing of the season once again in 94-95, setting another British transfer record. Andy Cole had two blistering years at Newcastle United, in which he scored 68 goals in only 84 games, and there was no hotter property in English football than him during the mid-1990s. In January 1995, it came as a huge shock then when Newcastle sold Cole to Manchester United for £6 million, plus the £1 million rated Keith Gillespie. 
Despite his goal scoring, Newcastle boss Kevin Keegan felt that Cole had lost his drive or had had his head turned, and Manchester United's bid was hard to turn down. Cole went on to score 121 goals in 275 games at Old Trafford, forming an iconic strike partnership alongside Dwight York and lifting five Premier League titles. Chris Sutton, who was signed by Blackburn Rovers, and Duncan Ferguson, who joined Everton, were the second and third biggest buys. 1995-96, Stan Collymore. Stealing in ahead of Les Ferdinand, who replaced Andy Cole at Newcastle United, and Dennis Bergkamp, a huge marquee signing by Arsenal, who became the highest earner in the Premier League at the time, is Liverpool signing Stan Collymore. Only ever capped three times by England due to intense forward competition, that didn't stop Collymore from breaking Andy Cole's British record transfer fee, fresh off the back of a campaign in which he had scored 22 goals for Nottingham Forest. It is interesting to note that three out of our first four inclusions were all Nottingham Forest player sales. No, it isn't. Oh, never mind. I found it interesting, so at least that's one of us. 1996-97. Alan Shearer. The British record transfer fee wasn't just broken in 1996 when Newcastle United signed Alan Shearer, it was absolutely shattered. And indeed, for the first time since 1951, it meant that an English club held the world transfer record. Alan Shearer, who was born in Newcastle but began his career with Southampton, had scored 130 goals in only 171 games in four seasons at Blackburn Rovers, and was the most prolific goalscorer in the Premier League. Manchester United and Newcastle United went all in to sign Shearer, but after much deliberation, he chose to join his boyhood club. Shearer went on to score more than 200 goals at St. James's Park, becoming the highest goal scorer of the Premier League era, and also the highest in the peacetime history of Newcastle United. Fabrizio Ravanelli and Nicky Barnby came in second and third, but a distant second and third, it must be said. 1997-98, Stan Collymore. Our first two-time inclusion, and the first of only three in total, I believe, after 35 goals in 81 games over the course of two seasons at Liverpool, Stan Collymore was on the move once again. Just like Shearer the season before, Collymore was joining his boyhood club, Aston Villa in his case, in a deal worth a club record £7 million. It wasn't enough to threaten Shearer's record or the world record that had by this stage been broken by Ronaldo, but it was a huge amount of money for Villa. In return, Collymore only managed to score 12 goals over the next three years, during which time he had long-term injuries, was diagnosed with mental health disorders, and was accused of assault by two separate partners. After Collymore, Graham Lasso and Les Ferdinand were the league's next most expensive signings that season. 1998-99, Dwight York. Continuing the theme of the same clubs cropping up again and again, the most expensive transfer of the 1998-99 Premier League season was between Aston Villa and Manchester United. Dwight York was the player who made the move from Villa Park to Old Trafford in a deal worth £12.6 million. York made 98 goal contributions in 152 games for Manchester United before he was sold to Blackburn Rovers. Yap Stam, the next most expensive signing that season, was also signed by Manchester United. 1999-2000, Thierry Henry and Emil Heskey. The first, and indeed the only tie in this entire video, two of the greatest footballers of all time both commanded £11 million transfer fees in the 1999-2000 season. Thierry Henry, who was probably the better goal scorer out of the two, was reunited with Arsene Menger at Arsenal. Meanwhile, Heskey, who was a far superior hold-up man, became a club record signing for Liverpool. I jest, what am I like? But Heskey actually formed a fantastic strike partnership alongside Michael Owen and won six trophies in four seasons at Anfield. But Henry became arguably the greatest player of the Premier League era at Arsenal. Lightning quick, brilliant on the ball, and a devastating goal-scoring and creating force, Henri went on to play almost 400 times for Arsenal, where a statue of him can be found outside of the club's new ground. 
Chris Sutton, who was signed for £10 million by Chelsea, earns another mention. 2000 to 2001, Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand was recently mocked for claiming that he would be worth £170 million in today's market, but I am sad to report, very unusually it must be said, he's probably not far wrong. Ferdinand was a generational centre-back who could really do it all. His athleticism, reading of the game, and ability on the ball were all first class, and that's why West Ham were able to get a British record fee for him when he joined Leeds United in November of 2000. The £18 million price tag set both an all-round British record as well as being a world record for a defender, but it still proved to be an absolute bargain. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank and Sergei Rebrov were that season's next most expensive arrivals, the latter of whom definitely didn't prove to be a bargain. 2001-02, Juan Sebastian Verón. A regular inclusion on this channel in recent weeks, it feels like, Juan Sebastian Verón was one of those players, like Alan Shearer, who didn't just break the British record transfer fee, but absolutely bulldozed it. Manchester United paid Lazio £32 million to sign Juan Sebastian Verón in a move which indicated football's changing wealth and power dynamics, moving away from Serie A and towards the Premier League and Real Madrid. Nonetheless, it was the Italians who had the last laugh in the case of Verón, who was an outstanding midfielder and illustrated that fact in the Champions League, but struggled to adjust to the style of the Premier League and found it hard to dislodge a midfielder settled as that of Keane Giggs, Beckham and Scholes. It was a Manchester United doubleheader that summer, as Ruud van Nistelrooy was the league's next most expensive arrival, followed by Leeds United recruit Robbie Keane. 2002-03, Rio Ferdinand. Our second and our penultimate two-time inclusion, Rio Ferdinand set British record transfer fees and was the most expensive signing of the season twice in the space of just three seasons. Although he had continued his ascent at Leeds United, the Yorkshire side were desperately in need of raising cash following failure to qualify for the Champions League. The fact that he was sold to Manchester United rubs salt fairly deep into the wounds, but it's unlikely that anyone else could have afforded Ferdinand's potentially £33.3 million transfer fee. It restored Ferdinand as the world's most expensive defender, a title he had briefly lost to Lilian Toram, and he went on to play 455 times for Manchester United, where he won 14 trophies. El Hadji Juf and Nicholas Anelka were that season's next most expensive arrivals, but neither commanded even half of Ferdinand's fee. 2003-04, Hernan Crespo. Routinely described as a Chelsea flop, whilst it would be fair to say that things didn't go exactly as it was hoped that they would for Hernan Crespo at Chelsea, I don't think that he was in Andrei Shevchenko, Fernando Torres, or Romelu Lukaku territory when it came to underwhelming. A world-class centre-forward who had just turned 28, Crespo commanded a fee of £16.8 million during a wild summer of spending by the Blues, who had just been bought by Roman Abramovich. Crespo's record in a Chelsea shirt, 25 goals in 73 games, wasn't actually that bad. The problem was that they couldn't shift him out and ended up paying most of his wages for five years. It was an all Abramovich top three in 0304, with Crespo being joined by Damien Duff and our old friend Juan Sebastian Verón. 2004-05, Wayne Rooney. The first and the only season in which a disclaimer is required, Didier Drogba was the most expensive signing of the 2004-05 Premier League season, purely in terms of his upfront fee, setting Chelsea back a cool £24 million, whereas Manchester United only paid an upfront fee of £20 million for Wayne Rooney. Rooney's deal, however, included £7 million in future add-ons, and given that he went on to score over 250 goals for Manchester United over the next 13 years, becoming their and England's all-time record goal scorers and winning every trophy available to the club, it's probably a safe assumption to make that those add-ons were activated. 
Drogba also did quite well at Chelsea, it should be said, bagging over 150 goals and scoring in virtually every final that he ever played in. Meanwhile, fellow Chelsea signing Ricardo Carvalho came a distant third. 2005-06, Michael Essien. Of the three most expensive Premier League signings in the 2005-06 season, two of them were called Michael and suffered chronic injury problems, namely Michael Essien and Michael Owen, and the other one was absolutely terrible, namely Sean Wright Phillips at Chelsea. Essien might have become increasingly injury prone from his fourth season at Chelsea onwards, but for the first three, he was one of the best midfielders in the world industrious, combative, and a scorer of some quite frankly outrageous goals, SCN still managed to make more than 250 appearances for Chelsea, which is about twice as many as Sean Wright Phillips, and over three times as many as Michael Owen made at Newcastle United. 2006-07, Andrei Shevchenko. For the first time in four years, the British transfer record was broken in June 2006 when Chelsea signed Andrei Shevchenko from AC Milan for a fee of £30.8 million. Long sought after by Roman Abramovich specifically, Shevchenko was one of the best forwards in the world. He had scored 173 goals in 296 games in Milan at a time when Serie A defences were regarded as being the best in the world winning the Ballon d'Or in 2004 and scoring 28 times the season before Chelsea signed him. At Chelsea, however, Shevchenko would only manage 22 goals in 77 games and just 9 goals in 48 games in the Premier League. It didn't help that Chelsea boss Jose Mourinho never actually wanted Shevchenko, played with a lone striker, and Didier Drogba had that position on lockdown. Meanwhile, Shevchenko had certainly lost some of his confidence and athleticism as his return to AC Milan on loan illustrated. Michael Carrick and John Obi Mikel, two much better signings, were the next most expensive that season, but they went for about the same fee combined as Shevchenko cost Chelsea on his own. 2007-08, Fernando Torres. There weren't that many blockbuster signings in the 2007-08 Premier League season, at least in terms of transfer fees, but there were some absolute belters in terms of future legacies, including the most expensive signing of them all, Fernando Torres. Seeing off Manchester United duo Anderson and Nani as the most expensive 2007-08 Premier League signing, Torres set Liverpool back roughly £20 million. Following six sensational seasons with his boyhood club Atletico Madrid, Torres hit yet new heights at Anfield, particularly during his debut campaign. A whopping 33 goals in 46 games in a season which ended with Torres scoring the winning goal and receiving the Man of the Match award in the final of Euro 2008, as Spain won their first major trophy since 1964, saw Torres finish third in 2008 Ballon d'Or voting, trailing only Messi and Ronaldo. In total, he went on to score 81 goals in 142 games for Liverpool. 2008-09 Robinho. Following a period of relative Chelsea dominance from a financial perspective, Manchester City's new owners signalled their intent on transfer deadline day 2008, signing Chelsea target Robinho for a new British record transfer fee. Signed for £32.5 million on the same day as Man City's takeover was completed, for all his talents, Robinho failed to justify that price tag during his time with the Citizens. He stuck around for just 18 months, scoring 16 goals in 53 games, before being sold for only £15 million to AC Milan. Robinho has since been convicted of sexual assault and given a nine-year prison sentence in Milan, which the Italian government is seeking for him to serve in Brazil, since Brazil doesn't extradite its citizens. Fellow deadline day signing Dimitar Berbatov, which Manchester City also attempted to hijack, and pre-takeover Man City signing Joe, were the 2008-09 season's next most expensive arrivals. 2009-10, Carlos Tevez. Making it back-to-back -back Manchester City signings, if signing Robinho sent out the message that Man City could outbid any team in world football, 
the arrival of Carlos Tevez served to illustrate that they could poach someone from their bitter local rivals. Tevez, who had a complicated ownership arrangement, to put it mildly, had been on loan at Manchester United for the past two seasons, constituting one-third of a phenomenal attacking trio, alongside Wayne Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo. The Red Devils met Tevez's supposed £25.5 million asking price, but Manchester City swooped in with a bid of £51.25 million. Euros plus a contract offer to Tevez worth £198,000 a week before any bonuses. It made Tevez the most expensive and indeed the highest paid Premier League player of all time, and in return, Tevez handed in a transfer request, went on an indefinite holiday mid-season, and refused to come off the bench against Bayern Munich. Admittedly, there were some happier moments in there too, and when Tevez was actually up for playing, he was inevitably very good. It was a Man City triple header in 09-10, as Emmanuel Adebayor and Jolien Lescott were the league's next two most expensive signings. 2010-11, Fernando Torres. Our third and final two-time inclusion, both Fernando Torres and Chelsea couldn't be subdued for long, despite Man City's extraordinary post-2008 wealth and spending. Another Abramovich signing, Torres had actually made an uncharacteristically sluggish start to the 2010-11 season, but a brace against Chelsea ensured that the Blues maintained their pursuit of him. The £50 million fee, meanwhile, was yet another British record. Torres's legacy is sometimes debated at Chelsea due to his contributions in Champions League and Europa League winning campaigns, but the reality is that in relation to his fee, he was massively underwhelming. A tally of 45 goals in 172 games and just 20 Premier League goals in 110 appearances over the course of four seasons was not befitting of the most expensive player in the history of English football, and Torres later left Chelsea for virtually nothing. Liverpool signing Andy Carroll at £35 million and Man City's Edin Dzeko at £27 million take second and third. 2011-12. Sergio Aguero. You can't keep Manchester City down for long, and in the 2011-12 season, they delivered their most significant signing of all. Sergio Aguero was sought after by practically every super club on the planet, including Spanish and Catalan giants Real Madrid and Barcelona, yet Manchester City still managed to sign him. It was a signing that not only really announced Man City's seriousness on the European stage, much more so than Robinho, but also, unlike Robinho, it actually took the team to another level. Aguero bagged a stunning brace on his debut against Swansea City and ended the season by scoring the last-minute winner that won the Citizens, their first title of the Premier League era. He departed nine years later as Manchester City's all-time record goalscorer with 260 goals for the club, and he features for the 2011-12 season ahead of Samir Nasri and Juan Mata. 2012-13, Eden Hazard. Comfortably among the three best signings in this video, I distinctly remember a pretty intense debate, particularly online, about whether Manchester United had got a better deal than Chelsea by signing Shinji Kagawa in the summer of 2012 after they had missed out on Eden Hazard. That was intensified after Hazard had a fairly insipid performance for Belgium against England, but it now looks like a bizarre discussion to begin with. Signed by Chelsea for £32 million, having already twice won the League on Player of the Year award at Lille, Hazard was probably the best player in the Premier League over the next seven seasons as a whole, and no player won more Premier League Man of the Match awards during that time than him. After more than 350 appearances at Stamford Bridge, Hazard was sold for a potential 146 million euros to Real Madrid, where he has been either injured or rubbish ever since. Oscar and Robin Van Persie take second and third. 2013-14, Mesut Ozil. The only Arsenal signing to feature in this entire video, which is actually quite remarkable when you think of Arsenal's success and consistency during the Premier League era, 
Mezarazal was a rare marquee signing. Already considered one of the best playmakers and technicians on the planet, owing to his time at Werder Bremen and Real Madrid, Ozil won the German Player of the Year award in 2011, 2012, and 2013, and subsequently, he set Arsenal back a fee of £42.5 million. It made Ozil the season's most expensive Premier League arrival, ahead of Juan Mata and Fernandinho, and he was actually very good. In his debut campaign, Ozil made 14 assists. In total at Arsenal, he made 79, but he could never escape accusations of laziness and disinterest, in large part due to the languid style that he had always had. Ozil left Arsenal for nothing in January 2021, and now age 34, he is currently without a club. I should probably clarify that when I say Ozil is Arsenal's only inclusion, he is actually their second inclusion, he is their only outright inclusion since Henri was tied with Heskey. 2014-15, Angel Di Maria. Real Madrid lost pivotal first-team players to Premier League teams for massive fees in consecutive summers, but neither had the desired impact at their new clubs. Angel Di Maria wasn't nearly as bad as some people make out in his sole season at Manchester United, following a remarkable season playing in midfield in Madrid, but he didn't utterly transform the Red Devils' fortunes, which is basically what he was brought in to do, with a British record £59.7 million fee being illustrative of those lofty expectations. Following his single season at Old Trafford, Di Maria was sold to PSG. Eloquin Mangala and Alexis Sanchez were the league's next most expensive arrivals in the 2014-15 season. 2015-16, Kevin De Bruyne. There was ridicule from some quarters of the British press when Man City forked out £55 million on Kevin De Bruyne in light of his difficulties getting game time at Chelsea. Well, they're not laughing now, nor would they have been in truth if they had watched any Bundesliga football the previous season. De Bruyne scored 16 goals and made 27 assists in his last season at Wolfsburg, deservedly winning the German Footballer of the Year award, hence why he costs more than even the likes of fellow 2015-16 Premier League signings like Raheem Sterling and Anthony Martial. De Bruyne has since become arguably the best midfielder of the Premier League era, and if not, then somewhere awfully close, off the back of eight phenomenal seasons and more than 350 appearances at the Etihad Stadium. 2016-17, Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba perhaps just falls into the Mesut Ozil category of having been signed for an absolute fortune, often playing very well, but ultimately being deemed a failure and leaving for nothing. But, you know, even worse. Pogba's situation was further complicated by the fact that Manchester United not only signed him for a world record-breaking £89 million fee, but had previously lost him for nothing. It never quite clicked for Pogba at Old Trafford, first time or last, but he comfortably features for the 2016-17 season, ahead of John Stones and Leroy Sane. 2017-18, Romelu Lukaku. It's a Manchester United doubleheader in 1617 and 1718, as they followed up the signing of Paul Pogba with Romelu Lukaku. Lukaku had scored 25 plus goals in each of the last two seasons at Everton, and 25 in the Premier League alone the previous season, which put him second only to Harry Kane in the division scoring charts. That meant that Everton could command a fee of £75 million, plus £15 million in potential future add-ons for the big Belgian, and it ought to be noted that he did score 27 goals in all competitions in his debut campaign at Old Trafford. Nonetheless, Lukaku seemed to lose some of his speed and sharpness the following season, in which he only scored 12 Premier League goals before being sold for a small loss to Inter Milan. Virgil van Dijk and Alvaro Morata only narrowly trailed him that season. 2018-19, Kepra Riza Balaga. 
the most expensive Premier League signing of the 2018-19 season, ahead of Riyad Mahrez and Christian Pulisic, and still by far the most expensive goalkeeper of all time, it is really remarkable just how much money Chelsea spent on Kepa Riza Balaga. The fee was £71.6 million. Kepa had a mixed debut campaign, which did include refusing to leave the pitch in a League Cup final at Wembley when Maurizio Sarri tried to substitute him, a poor second season, he was then replaced by Edouard Mendy, and having usurped the now departed Mendy for much of last season, there is talk of Chelsea signing a new number one this summer. All in all then, Kepa has been a pretty miserable signing for the Blues. 2019-20 Harry Maguire. World-class centre-backs don't come cheap, and nor does Harry Maguire. I'm sorry, Harry. That was totally unnecessary. Harry Maguire certainly isn't half as bad as a lot of people like to make out, but he probably never ought to have been an £80 million centre-back. That isn't his fault, but Manchester United's, who forked out that enormous fee following two seasons, in which Maguire had impressed at Leicester City. Maguire has made 175 appearances for Manchester United, who he captains, but there is talk of a parting this summer if a suitable buyer can be found. Nicola Pepe and Rodri were that season's next most expensive signings, neither being too far behind the man that Jamie Vardy nicknamed Slaphead. 2020-21 Kai Havertz You could argue that all of the last five inclusions in this video have been failures. That is caveated, quite significantly, in the case of Kai Havertz, by his winning goal in the 2021 Champions League final. Nonetheless, he was signed for a potential £71 million as one of the hottest prospects in world football, and he has failed to live up to that billing. Recently sold to Arsenal, Havertz certainly has the ability to reach the heights that were once expected of him, and he features here narrowly ahead of Ruben Diaz and fellow Chelsea signing Timo Werner. 2021-22 Jack Grealish Manchester City probably paid a little bit over the odds for Jack Grealish, but he is nevertheless absolutely brilliant. The Citizens paid £100 million for Grealish, a record fee for an Englishman, which is about to be broken by Declan Rice. His debut campaign was a slow affair, taking time, as so many players do, to adjust to Pep Guardiola's demands. This season just gone was far from slow though, as Grealish became one of Guardiola's most important and trusted players, starting in virtually all of their biggest games. Romelu Lukaku and Jadon Sancho, also signed for massive fees in 2021-22, have thus far proven to be significantly less successful for Chelsea and Manchester United. 2022-23 Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez was technically both the most expensive and the 23rd most expensive signing in all of world football last season, as he made two moves, the first from River Plate to Benfica, and then from Benfica to Chelsea following half a season in Portugal, and having helped Argentina win the World Cup. Benfica turned an extraordinary profit in a very short period of time on Fernandes, who Chelsea signed for a massive £106.8 million. That is a British record, and it makes Fernandes the fifth most expensive footballer of all time. Unlike some of Chelsea's recent signings, even if slightly overpriced, Fernandes is undeniably a fantastic footballer, and someone who you would hang your hat on, having a magnificent career within the game. He takes the crown for the season just gone, ahead of Anthony and Wesley Fofana. Overall then, Manchester United have had the most expensive signing in a record 10 Premier League seasons, Chelsea in 8, Manchester City in 5, Liverpool in 3, Arsenal in 2, and Tottenham Hotspur, Newcastle United, Aston Villa, and Leeds United each in 1. That is it for today's video then, but thank you all very much as ever for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. 
And of course, make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for both this channel and my second channel, both of which should be on your screens or about to appear on your screens now, along with a couple of videos that you might want to watch after this one. You can also find me on Twitter or on Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so.